In Classic WoW, there is a wide variety of different monsters that you can fight throughout the leveling process. Some of these monsters are incredibly hard to deal with, not necessarily difficult, but just have some very annoying skills and mechanics that end up frustrating you to a great extent. So in this video, I'm going to be going over 10 mobs in Classic WoW that you don't want to fight. Starting off at number 10 is the Defias Pillager. Any of you guys that are playing Alliance will know exactly how annoying this mob is. In fact, back in the day, the Defias Pillager was ranked as the number 2 deadliest NPC that has killed the most players in the game. But what makes the Defias Pillager so deadly? Why did it rack up such an insane amount of kills back in the day, and why is this mob still infamous today? So these Defias Pillagers can be found outside of Moonbrook in Westfall and are involved in a major questline that pretty much every Alliance player will take at some point. The key reason why the Defias Pillager is so strong is because of the spell it casts. The Defias Pillager casts a really strong Pyroblast that does an insane amount of damage to your character. Relative to the level, this does way more than any other spell in the game. If you're at the appropriate level, say 14 or 15, and you come here, a Defias Pillager can probably kill you in about 4 or 5 hits if you're a class with low HP. That's in combination with the fact that the Defias Pillagers and the Defias Looters are very closely clumped together, means that you're more than likely going to aggro more than one, and at that point your character is pretty much dead unless you run away. Not to mention, when they're on low HP, they'll run away and aggro more people to attack you. So it's just an absolute nightmare to deal with. That's in conjunction with the environment and the mob density that the Defias Pillagers are part of, basically is a recipe for disaster. And statistically speaking, out of all the mobs in Classic WoW, at least the regular mobs, this is the mob that has killed the most amount of players in the game. Okay, so number 9 on this list is the Son of Arugal. So to set the scene, the Son of Arugal is set in the Silver Pine Forest, which is a very low level zone. In the northern part of this zone, the mobs in this area are around level 10 to 12. However, there is a level 20 plus elite mob that is walking around these woods looking to gank any newbies. Most people's encounters with this mob is going to be walking around Silver Pine Forest just doing your normal quest routine, and then suddenly, out of nowhere from the woods, the son of Aragal runs up to you, which is a level question mark question mark elite, and pretty much one shots you. This is basically like a troll mechanic that Blizzard put into the game, kind of like the World of Warcraft classic version of Mr. X. Okay, so number 8 on this list is the Harvest Watcher. So Westfall just has a lot of really annoying mobs to deal with, and one of the most annoying mobs that you can fight here is the Harvest Watcher. Now the interesting thing about the Harvest Watcher is that yes, this is involved in the quest and you do need to kill 20 of them, but the fact that the surrounding mobs in this area, which is the northern part of Westfall, are all about level 10 to 12. However, these guys are level 15, being right next to mobs that are 4 levels lower. The Harvest Watchers themselves have an insane aggro radius and will pretty much run up to you from halfway across the map. They also have a giant health pool and since they're a mechanical mob, they are immune to bleed effects. The Harvest Watcher is definitely one of the most annoying mobs that you can fight. They're just way stronger than they really should be. Blizzard kind of overtuned these guys and it definitely adds flavor to this zone. Number 7 on this list is General Dracosaf. So guys, I wanted to put in some dungeon mobs into this list and I feel like General Dracosaf definitely deserves a spot because of how ridiculously overtuned he is relative to everything else in Upper Blackrock Spire. So the thing with General Dracosaf is that he is accompanied by two adds which are really strong in their own regard. In fact, if you wanted to clear this final boss in Upper Blackrock Spire, you essentially had to have a hunter to kite it about 300 yards away, then feign death, and hopefully the rest of the group could manage to kill the two adds before General Dracosaf comes back. Technically, you could do it without the hunter kiting method, however, this is pretty much required for most people's groups. It is just way overtuned compared to everything else in Upper Black Rock Spire, that most people won't even try to do this boss unless they have a hunter to kite it. I think what Blizzard was thinking when it came to designing General Dracosaf is that they wanted to make him as hard as possible since he was kind of like the gatekeeper for the Blackwing Lair attunement quest. Right behind General Dracosaf, you get the item to attune yourself to BWL, so I think they purposefully overtuned him to be somewhat of a gatekeeper. 
But either way, General Drakasaf is one of the hardest dungeon bosses in World of Warcraft history. Many groups have wiped even with the hunter kiting method. Okay, so number six on this list are spiders. Now, most people don't like spiders as is. I mean, a lot of people have a fear of spiders and it's not hard to imagine why. However, in Classic WoW, you do have a reason to fear them because of the really annoying abilities that they have. Spiders in this game basically just slow you down. A spider in Classic WoW will either have a web mechanic, which will basically root you for about 10 seconds in place. That is especially annoying if you're just on your mount, trying to go from one part of the map to the other, and then you get rooted by one of these spiders, then you have to unmount and kill them. Or they will have a poison that deliberately slows your character, so then you're pretty much forced to unmount and fight them. Spiders in Classic WoW basically demand your attention. If you accidentally aggro one, there's a good chance that you will have to deal with it and you can't just bulldoze your way through like other mobs in the game. They're not necessarily difficult to fight, they're just annoying. Number 5 on this list is Kobolds. These small mobs infest eastern kingdoms and are usually found in very tight and compact places such as caves and mines and will often run away to aggro more people in the nearby vicinity. Kobolds are extremely frustrating to deal with, especially if you're just a new player in the game. The mob density is extremely high and they run away, so it's just a recipe for disaster with a new player. I believe at one point during the early days of Classic WoW, the Kobolds in Eastern Kingdoms were some of the highest killed NPCs in the game, so that proves my point that you don't want to be fighting Kobolds in Classic WoW. There are easier mobs to farm. Number 4 on this list is Verdan the Ever Living. If I ask you what your least favourite dungeon in Classic WoW is, a lot of you will say the Wailing Caverns. Now the Wailing Caverns is a bit overboard when it comes to the trash, I mean it just takes such a long time to do Wailing Caverns if your group isn't that good, but at least there's some really nice loot from there. Any of you guys that have fought Verdan the Ever Living as the final boss in Wailing Caverns might have got a rude awakening as to how strong this NPC is. Verdan can pretty much one shot a tank at the level that you fight him, so it's kind of like a really fast DPS race. You just have to hope that your tank survives as long as possible and that your DPS can catch up before your group dies. The amount of damage that this guy can do is just way overtuned for everything else that you can find in this dungeon. However, the biggest slap in the face is the loot that this guy drops. Now considering how much great stuff that you can get for Wailing Caverns at around level 20, you would think that this guy would drop an absolutely beastly item, however that is not the case. He can drop a Sporid Cape which has 3 stamina and 2 spirit. It's not even blue. So yeah, if you're a healer in the Wailing Caverns, keep this in mind that your tank is going to be receiving an absolutely insane amount of damage and will either be 2-shotted or 1-shotted. Number 3 on this list is Murlocs. Now I believe that Murlocs need no explanation, these are just one of the worst mobs to fight in the game. Nobody wants to fight a Murloc, nobody wants to grind on Murlocs because of how annoying they are. The problem with Murlocs is the environment that they're in. They're always close nearby to water and if you go into water your movement speed is reduced to half whereas they get full movement speed. They are also very closely packed together, meaning that if you aggro one of them, the whole crew will come out and chase you down. They often have ranged abilities and nets, it's just an absolute nightmare to deal with. And in Westfall here, you can see that these guys pretty much have the running speed of an epic mount, so good luck trying to run away from them. I think I've died more to Murlocs than any other type of mob in the game. Murlocs are just infamous for being really annoying to deal with. And of course they run away, just to add the icing on the cake. Number 2 on this list is Elementals. So you guys may be wondering why I put Elementals on this list, and the reason is that if you're a caster DPS, depending on the elements that you use, you could actually make it so that it's almost impossible to kill an Elemental in the game. As an Elemental Shaman who uses nature damage, there is literally no way that I can fight against a Rock Elemental or an Air Elemental since my spells are literally immune. I cannot do any damage to them. Or worst of all, if you're playing a Frost Mage and you're fighting against a Water Elemental, you better go into your spellbook and find your Fireball spell. You won't be able to do any damage against it if you're using Frostbolt. Okay, so number one on this list is the Goblin Guards. 
If any of you guys have went to a goblin neutral town in Classic WoW and wondered why the peace is kept so much, these goblin gods are the reason. Nobody wants to do world PvP because these goblin gods will basically hunt you down and make it so that you can't escape. As soon as you start any world PvP, these guys will pounce on you, the whole crew will come out to attack you and net you, and use ranged abilities that you won't be able to run away from. Whenever you attack anybody in a neutral goblin town, it's going to be a matter of time before you go to the graveyard. There's pretty much no point in fighting these since more and more will spawn the more that you fight against them. The best case scenario is that you can just run away from them and hopefully you won't die. The goblin gods in Classic WoW are not to be messed with. These little guys are the peacekeepers, but you don't want to make them mad. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel. This is Faulty, signing out.